going on YouTube? Williamson Skinnels back at y'all again, man. I hope everybody's doing good. I'm doing art right myself. Sorry for the delay on posting videos and stuff, man. I know the last time I posted, I said I would let y'all, you know, kind of see how this one right here was doing and how he was growing up and stuff. Uh, yeah, you can see. Still doing good, man. Turned out to be a good dog. Like him a lot. Probably be one of the good studs here at the yard. But um, back to uh the subject, what I was going to talk about, man. I'm going to uh, start making these educational series, man. Just talking about different things, man. Like choosing your puppy. Uh, curs, cold dogs. A lot of anything y'all would like to hear me talk about or... Anything like that, man, just leave it in the comment section, man. I see everybody's comments, man. I, I might not respond at the time, but I see everybody's comments. So just leave me an email, williamsonskennels at gmail.com. Just let me know what y'all want to hear, you know, if you what, what you need broke down. If you don't understand something, I'm not, the, I'm not a master, man. I still learn every day myself, man, about different type of things, man. Some shit, you, you, it can't be taught. You got to be hands-on. But I'm going to start this educational video on uh, choosing a puppy. Choosing a puppy, man. Get to know your breeder. Maybe get to know his dogs. I would say if you could, if you could just go to his yard and spend a little time, you know, around the dogs and cool, go and do that. You know what I'm saying? Get to know, see what you're getting into. Me, I wouldn't. I, me personally, I wouldn't get a dog if I couldn't physically see the mom and the dad if i didn't know you personally like no okay well and seeing these dogs know how these dogs act i would want to come around you and see tip them of your dog is your dog skittish is he shot towards people is he people aggressive is your, is your dog does it have an overbite underbite what size like what size are the parents what are, what, are the, what what do they look like what's their structure like do they have hip problems do they have teeth problems like do they come, I mean, are they disease prone? There's a lot of different things when it comes to getting these dogs that people really just don't take into consideration. But that's what I take into consideration. I check my puppies, I check their teeth. I make sure their teeth are straight, you know. I don't want no underbite, no overbite. And I have to trust the breeder and his word, first and foremost, because if you, if, I don't feel the vibe off of you and feel like you're trustworthy of your word, then I'll, I'll take everything you saying like a grain of salt, man. I won't pay you no fucking attention, man. You're just a fucking other liar and a shit and a bullshit person that's got these dogs just trying to make a dollar off of them. And if you're in these dogs to get rich, man, I, I would advise you to go mess with toy dogs or Frenchies or bullies or something. There's a lot, there's a whole lot more money in those dogs than there are in pit bulls. Like a lot of people get into these dogs and think, oh, pretty pup, pretty puppies, pretty puppies. They don't know nothing about a pedigree, uh, bloodlines. They don't have no clue, no knowledge whatsoever about the dogs. So make sure that the person that you're getting your dog from has knowledge of these dogs and they're not just selling you something that them Tom, Dick, and Harry put together down the road and now uh, I can't keep all of these puppies, so I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to try to sell a couple of these dogs right here, and just put the and the, and people like that are place dogs in fucked up situations where they know that the person, person, the person itself may not even be stable, have a roof over their head, they're living house to house, but they'll they'll be quick to sell them a dog. Me personally, if you don't have nowhere to house this dog. You don't got a nice chain set up or even a little bit of experience, but I I wouldn't put a dog of mine in your hands. No disrespect to nobody because everybody starts somewhere, but I would much rather you start and learn about the dogs before you just come and get a dog because these dogs are not for the faint of heart. They love people, they love kids, they love they love walking, they, they love they love anything really. Any task you put them to, they'll do it. They, they're gonna love doing it. But also these dogs acquire attention, you have to walk them. There are a lot of responsibilities that a lot of people don't take into consideration when you want to own an American Pit Bull Terrier. There, there aren't, I mean, like you see him, he's laid down right now. 
It's hot outside. It's hot out here. It's, the sun is beaming. He's just laying low. Now around, I would say about around five or six o'clock when the sun starts to go down and everything is shaded, or oh, I drop that rope, he'll come out there and hit. So he'll get on that rope right now and swing it and swing on it right now because he know I, that's what we do. But it's too hot. He's trying to please me. And I'm trying to I'm trying to save him because he'll over he'll overdo himself. He'll run himself hot. Just out here, just swinging, swinging, swinging. But anyway, back to the subject. Check the dog for check the dog's health. Make sure the person you're getting your dog from has a good has a good record, man. By record, I mean shot record. They make sure they they can tell you what day. They can tell you they, what day they wormed him. They can tell you what day he got his parvo shot. They can tell you what day the dogs were born. Right off top of not really right off top of their head. They got paper. They got records to show everything and how everything was done. On this day, we done this. On on day twelve. I done this, or day 13, the puppy weighed this much. On day 14, he weighed this much. Puppies are always supposed to be gradually gaining weight. They're always, and that's how you tell when you're when you're weaning and whipping your pups. It's always to keep a good record because you can see what dogs are thriving and what dogs are lacking, and therefore you can kind of like really assist assist in nature and help that pup that's really lacking, give him up, maybe pull him to the side and, and feed him off to the side so that he'll eat a little more because the bigger ones might be pushing him out the way he might not be getting fed enough. I know some people don't really do that, you know, but that's a, that's a good way to, to make your percentages a lot higher because a lot of people have trouble when weapon pups. Pups be dying. Not necessarily saying that's on them or that's something that they done, but there are things that you can do that'll help and boost your your success rate when whelping pups and stuff. But anyway, make sure your dog structure's goddamn all the way intact. You don't want you don't want no dog with rickets or whatever. Like I've had a dog and I know y'all seen her on my on my yard to a video, Mercy. She had rickets. I did not raise Mercy. Mercy was a gift to see if I could straighten her legs out, see if I could fix it because the dude thought that I would take and take her to the vet. And the vet, I mean, the vet probably could have fixed it, but the way he was talking about fix, he was talking about breaking both her legs and repositioning them. And she was so old, man, I felt like there would be more strain on her to, to recover and all of that because she was she was an old dog, man. She was the oldest, she was really the oldest dog that I've ever let someone give me. But it was just a, you know, a shot. But it didn't really work out like that. But make sure the dog is healthy. You don't want a dog with rickets. Even though rickets has a puppy, it's easy to fix, you know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want that me just coming and getting a dog from you. I wouldn't want to come back home and say, Oh, I gotta fix this puppy, he's got rickets. I would expect you to already be on that and fixing that and be in the process of fixing that. And when I come and got the pup, if it did have rickets, say, well, hey, here's this right here. Do this right here, and this is good. it's going to cure. It's going to fix this right here. Don't have to call back and say, oh, well, oh, I got the dog home, and he's real wormy or he has rickets. What do I, what do, I do? Like, the breeder should already be up on that. They should already be up on that because they, they can see Firsthand, oh, this dog's looking a little funny. His leg, his legs are shaped funny. It looks like he's gonna have rickets, or he's already born with rickets. You know, like born with a birth defect. Make sure you check, you know, check black dogs because black dogs are known. They're more susceptible to getting demodeck mange than others. Like it might look like a, just like a little scab on the top of their head where the puppies have been real, real rough, and that's what you would think it is. But it'll be demodeck mange. Like there are certain, there are little things that you could learn and adjust to before going and getting your puppy that you could be on point to prevent anything that you think bad will go happen. You could learn about it and beforehand so that it will lessen your chances of that bad happening to you. Okay, chill out. See, look at him. There was a, a school bus riding by. He do, he's he's on go with everything. He doesn't really like too much of nothing. Love my dog though, man. He don't really like too much of nothing, but that's just things you need to look like him. He's, he's real aggressive on everything except humans. Ducks, chickens, cats, squirrels, birds, 
anything with a heartbeat was well, it's not a human he's he don't he don't really get along with I haven't really seen him around puppies like that so I can't say that he's good with puppies I wouldn't really even trust him around a puppy you know that's why I say like know your dogs and know what you're getting into like it could be cool today bad tomorrow that's how these dogs operate like he could be cool like when he was a puppy he was cool around other dogs he's grown up now and that's not gonna fly he's never liked cats or any other thing but dogs he would tolerate for a little bit of time but now he's not he, it's zero toleration for another animal man zero and that's why it's hard to take him to a dog park or let him run around free that's why you have to have you have to hand walk him you have to use a treadmill as ways of forms for him to get exercise and him to be healthy because that's the that's the overall objective is to keep a healthy dog at all times. But that's all I got for y'all in this episode, man. I know I've been rambling on, just feeding y'all a little bits and pieces of information here and there. But if there's anything else that y'all would like to add, feel free to do so in the comments. So you got a rebuttal, feel free to put leave it in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe, man. William Skinner, man. Until the next time.